What's up you guys, Rex here. In today's video, I'll be talking about gap years. What are some of the pros, some of the cons, what are my personal thoughts, and my biggest rule related to gap years. I'm hoping this video will help you decide if you should take a gap year or not. Now I'm making this video around this time because I know that there's a good chunk of people who are maybe gonna apply to medical school this cycle, maybe gonna push it off, and they're sort of up in the air on taking a gap year or not. And so I totally understand that. That's a tough decision. Hopefully this video helps you. Additionally, I think it's good to have a plan well beforehand. So if you are a sophomore or a junior or a freshman in undergrad, to plan ahead. All right, is a gap year something that's gonna fit into my plan? or am I gonna try to go straight through? The more you decide in advance, the more you have a plan, and that will at least slightly alleviate the stress of an already very stressful application process for most people. So I recommend having a plan. If you're in a situation where you're still up in the air and it's crunch time, about a month from now you'll be applying or not, Either way, hope this video helps. So one of the first pros related to taking a gap year is MCAT related. So it, first of all, may give you a lot more time to study for the MCAT, depending on when your schedule is. If you take multiple gap years, you can have all kinds of time to study for the MCAT. Additionally, you might not have time to take all of those pre-med courses you want to take before you start studying, and so that's another advantage that a gap year allows you. Not taking a gap year, you might have to have all of your pre-med courses done by like first semester of junior year, or at the latest second semester of junior year. Some people, if you're trying to take the MCAT early, you might have to get all of your pre-med courses done by your sophomore year of undergrad, which is not realistic for a lot of people. So taking that gap year and having all four years to study for the MCAT and take pre-med courses may be advantageous. Additionally, maybe you try to take the MCAT your junior year and you get a score that you know you can do a lot better than, it may be advantageous to take a gap year. In that case, to go a whole year, go a whole cycle and wait and really have time to study for the MCAT and really jump that score up. So that's one possible benefit. Additionally, there can be a lot of course related reasons. And so one of the most basic would be if you don't have time to get all of the pre-med requirements done, in your three years or four years of undergrad before you would actually be matriculating to medical schools that you have requirements required to attend. And so if you can't get those done, you have to take a gap year. Additionally, for GPA reasons, you might wanna be looking at taking a gap year to bump your GPA a little bit by taking a post back program. That could be another reason. Now, overall, I'd say the biggest reason to take a gap year is to fill a hole in your application that you didn't have time to achieve in your years up to that point. And so this could be that you didn't get enough research experience, you didn't get enough volunteering, shadowing, clinical experience, whatever it may be. Additionally, you can use that gap year to make yourself a very competitive applicant by sort of going above and beyond what someone would be able to achieve in just their three years in undergrad before applying. So this could be some really awesome research and publications, or it could be a really cool clinical experience working full time that someone wouldn't be able to do while in undergrad. So it can be just sort of that filling that hole or making your application stand out. Either of those reasons can be strong pros of taking a gap year. Real quick, some other pros is you get an academic break. Some people need a break after four years of undergrad before starting another four years of schooling. Another reason is having time to like explore the world or do some bucket list experience that you really have some goal you want to achieve that you know you won't be able to do once you start the grind of medical school residency, starting your career, etc. So you might want to take a gap year to achieve that goal. Logistically, it can be really nice to not be in undergrad while you're interviewing. It's kind of annoying to be a full-time student in undergrad your senior year when you're trying to interview to medical schools and missing class all the time. So that could be an advantage. Conversely, this might be something to talk about in the disadvantage category where if you're working a full-time job, it can be even harder to get time off to interview. And lastly, you might just need more time for yourself to reflect and really decide, is this the career you want to pursue? And you might need time just to think about and craft a personal statement and really be more reflective. So that's a perfectly valid pro of taking a gap year. So now some cons. The first one I would say is financial. I've seen a lot of people say that an advantage of taking a gap year would be to work for a little bit, make some money, save up for medical school. I strongly disagree with this, just sort of from a mathematical perspective, that if you are taking a gap year, essentially what you're doing, if we look at by the time you're 35, you are trading one year of a doctor's salary for one year of a just out of undergrad salary, which is probably going to be significantly less 
than that doctor salary that you would be making otherwise. And so I realized that it can be complicated by time value of money. You could be investing that money and compound up maybe if you're comparing that one year of income when you're 23 and you invest it, it may get closer to that one year of income when you're 32 as an attending. But I don't think that's broadly speaking gonna be something you would be doing is investing that money. You'd be paying for medical school. So I think it's fine if you take out more loans by not taking a gap year because you'll be a doctor sooner and have that doctor's income sooner. I think broadly speaking, you will always come out of head the sooner you become a doctor from a strictly financial standpoint. The next biggest con is you gotta figure out something to do. If you don't do something cool or interesting or something you can talk about when you get into your medical school interview and the first thing they ask you is, what did you do during your gap year? Or filling out secondaries of what have you been doing during your gap year? That can really hurt you and that can be another added layer of stress to figure something out. And that was part of why I didn't take a gap year is I didn't know what I would do during a gap year. And so that makes it a little bit more challenging that doesn't mean it's always a disadvantage. If you actually find something to do that is a huge benefit, that can be a huge pro of taking a gap year, but just that stress of having to figure out something to do, I would say is a con. Now, sort of the opposite of a pro being you get to take an academic break, depending on your personality and where you're at in your academic career, it may be a con having that one year break where you know you're gonna come back from it and really have to like knock the rust off. And it would be easier for some people to just go straight through of their schooling, they have their study habits, they can continue them, they're in a routine, that would be easier for them. For other people, taking that academic break, recharging, all that stuff, that may be the best for other people. And lastly, a con is that you get one less year of your adult life living what is hopefully your dream, that you're going to medical school to be a doctor. And so if you look at your adult working career from whatever age to retirement at 65, if you take a gap year, you get one less of those years being spent living your dream as a doctor, which for some people could be a huge disadvantage. And so now my personal thoughts on gap years, why I didn't take a gap year and why I didn't even consider one on the table. So first was that last con of like living the dream that my dream is to be a surgeon. I wanna spend as many years of my life being a surgeon. I don't wanna spend years of my life being a gap year student or whatever you would call a gap year person that I wanna spend as much time being a doctor and I wanna be a doctor as soon as I possibly can and I'm really excited for that. So I hated the idea of having to wait. That was something that would have been mentally difficult for me to do. Now, something to consider with that gap year is a lot of times you can get into better schools by taking that gap year to really boost your application or fill in all of the gaps. And so it, for many people, is, quote, easier to get into a really competitive school if they take that gap year to build the strongest application possible. And so I very much made the decision that, all right, maybe I won't get into as prestigious of a school by not taking gap year. My application will be less competitive by not taking a gap year, but I am totally fine with that. I am not applying to medical school to be a Harvard doctor. I'm applying to medical school just to be a doctor. I will be thrilled and over the moon no matter where I get into medical school. And so that's just something to consider is, are you willing to maybe go to a less prestigious top tier university by not taking a gap year? Or are you really shooting for that top tier university? In which case it might be more likely that you need that gap year to have a competitive enough application to put yourself in a good position to get into those top tier prestigious schools. And so my other thought process was that I really had nothing to lose by trying to not take a gap year. The worst case scenario is I get rejected from everywhere. And I don't want to trivialize how incredibly painful that would have been and the fact that I also spent a ton of money on application fees. So there, there are not no drawbacks of sort of taking that risk, applying, realizing you might not get in, and then hoping you get in the next cycle. But that was something I was comfortable with, that I, I went into my application cycle saying, I will apply without trying to not take a gap year, but I will live my life up until then as if I am preparing that I am taking a gap year and I will try to plan something to figure out what to do for that gap year, et cetera, et cetera. And I, I don't think it's something that puts you at a massive disadvantage where if you apply and you don't get in anywhere, that's like, oh, now blacklist that kid. We aren't letting him get back in. I think that can show a ton of resiliency that you obviously really want to be a doctor. If you are comfortable reapplying to medical school after facing a ton of rejection. And so if you spin that well in your application the subsequent year, 
that can really catapult you to getting into more schools. That I know of a lot of people that apply, get in nowhere, and they really don't even do a ton during their next gap year. They more just continue living their life, but just by virtue of applying a second time, they all of a sudden get into a bunch of schools and not much has changed with their application. Ideally, you are gonna do something so that something significantly has changed with your application. So that in that worst case scenario, you apply trying to not take a gap year, don't get anywhere, you're ready to go, excited. All right, this is where I would have ended up anywhere if I took that gap year, I was on the fence, life's good, I'm still gonna be a doctor, we're just applying, I'm taking a gap year. Wasn't my choice, but we are. Thousands of people do it, it's not a bad thing, life's great, still gonna be a doctor. All right, and I just wanna end with my biggest rule of deciding if you should take a gap year or not is if you don't have a specific reason for taking a gap year, do not take a gap year. And so what I'm really trying to say with this is that if you take a gap year, have a plan with it, know why you're taking it. That, all right, I am taking a gap year because I need to boost my MCAT score. I'm taking an MCAT because I need to do a post back program to boost my GPA. I'm taking a gap year because I have zero shadowing in clinical experience. I need to do that in order to get into medical school. I'm taking a gap year because I know my life dream is to see France for and live there for a month. And so I'm going to do that during my gap year. I'm going to come back and then I'm going to work here, do some awesome research, et cetera, et cetera. Just have a plan with it. And so if you're in a position where it's like, oh, I might not get in this cycle. I don't know. Maybe I'm not ready last minute. I'll not apply. I'll take a gap year. Don't do it just because you're afraid of not getting in. Have a reason. At least be able to look at your application be specific if we're like, all right, I don't think my chances are great this year for this reason, this reason, and this reason, and it is those three reasons that I am taking a gap year. Don't just take a gap year out of sort of fear or thinking that's what you're supposed to do or uncertainty, fear of rejection, worry. Have a specific reason. Be proud of that reason. Stick to that plan. Realize, all right, now I have a plan. I'm ready to go. I'm taking a gap year. It's going to be great. I'm going to have fun during it, and I'm going to be a doctor at the end of it. So those are my thoughts, hopefully not too ranty, my thoughts on taking gap years. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, I'd love to hear about them down below. I have a lot of other videos on the medical school application process, which will be a playlist on the right. If you want to catch more of my videos, make sure you subscribe, hit the notification bell. As always, like the video if you like the video, dislike the video if you dislike the video. Until next time, don't be ordinary, go be great.